The expectations of Ready Player One, when I first heard the news was, well, yeah, you have to get Spielberg. The Ernest Cline novel builds such an incredible world all around you, and the thought of those visuals coming to life in a Steven Spielberg film, that had so much potential. There's a lot of anticipation. People talked a lot about it. They talked about all the pop cultural references, which, you know, kind of like excited me. At the same time, it's like, is this story gonna be completely dependent on just these references? I had lost faith in Spielberg a little bit, to be honest with you. And I wasn't expecting a lot, just because I haven't gotten much from Spielberg for the last, you know, 13 years. I was specifically looking for a return of the Spielberg blockbuster. This is absolutely a return to form for Spielberg, and I'm so incredibly happy that that's still inside him, that that ability is still there. There's sometimes when you're watching a Spielberg movie recently, and you didn't know who was directing it. I felt like Steven Spielberg was directing this film. It had that wisdom of a man who has lived through all of the movies that he's referencing, through all of the culture that he's referencing, through all of the advancements in storytelling that he's referencing. It's basically a big celebration of everything that Spielberg has achieved since the beginning. Whether you're talking about the drama, whether you're talking about character development, world building, it almost feels like Spielberg is using every single thing he's ever done in order to make this Ready Player One movie. The Spielberg we fell in love with is a Spielberg who can take us on an adventure. Indiana Jones, Jaws, Hook even, he takes us on an adventure and I think that's what I was missing from him for the last few years. You know it when you see it and you feel it. You can do anything, be anyone, without going anywhere at all. Well, Steven Spielberg is great, and he's done this in many other movies, is creating worlds and environments that the characters inhabit that you believe in. Everything about the Oasis is just so incredibly immersive, and he does such an incredible job of surrounding you with everything that's happening. There's a shot that, the, you know, that starts the movie that if you're not careful, you get nauseous. One gigantic shot, and you're swirling around, and there's like a million things coming at you. He's able to kind of show you how everyone jumps into the Oasis. The Oasis was the brainchild of James Halliday. Hello. If you're watching this, I'm dead. I created a hidden object, an Easter egg. The cool thing about the whole concept of Ready Player One and the idea of including Easter eggs is it's not nostalgia just for the sake of nostalgia and saying, oh, look what's there and there and there. It's part of the story. It's part of the nature of the Oasis. The Easter eggs were the whole reason I saw this thing. So I was smiling from ear to ear because it was my childhood come to life. The references were great, were really funny, and they were great nods to people who had grown up around this time, like I did. I grew up around this time. I got every, almost every single reference. My generation, Generation X, I do think benefits the most from this film because Spielberg made his mark, marking movies, to my generation. It's very, very specific to the generation that was young when he was making E.T. and Jaws and Raiders. You had to be born in the late 70s, early 80s to really have all those land. And I'm noticing that some of the people that missed that sweet spot of Spielberg that I grew up with, Ready Player One isn't landing with them. What's going on? Just practicing my Mario Kart, come on! As it starts going along, I was just, I, there's something off. There was definitely something off. There's a little bit of Steven Spielberg sprinkled throughout the entire film, not just the films that he's directed, but also films that he's produced. You get glimpses of them, but those glimpses are shallow, hollow, nostalgic references. There's no heart to it, there's no weight to it. I found myself thinking, why should I care about any of this? It didn't feel like there was a whole lot of heart to it, and that's weird for a Spielberg movie. If you're telling me that these characters are supposed to carry weight, they need to do so, and they need to have an arc that's more than just the two-dimensional, look at the emblem on my chest. And so much of this movie is just look at the emblem on my chest. At the end of the day, this movie is nostalgia porn. That went well. What I think the film is about is like Spielberg coming to terms with what he did to us. You know, he gave us a culture of fantasy. There's a lot of beauty in this fantasy, but there's also some consequences to it. It's powerful to live in this fantasy world of pop culture, but you have to be very careful that you don't forget what's important. 
And we're talking about a book and a movie that celebrates fandom and loving what you love, but where it transcends that message is the idea of reality is real. No matter how real virtual reality can feel, it's no substitute for actual reality, and that's important. Save the Oasis. Save the world. For me, Ready Player One, while I enjoyed it and thought it was a fun ride, I don't have it in my top 10 Spielberg films. I probably wouldn't even put it in honorable mentions, but maybe close. It's way too early. I've seen this movie once. I know that I liked it a lot. Will I feel the same way when I watch it a second time? I don't know. So I'm not willing to put this in the top 10 yet, not because I don't think it's worthy, because I don't think it's time yet to have that discussion. Well, I don't think this movie comes anywhere near a top 10. I don't even think this movie gets an honorable mention. I think Ready Player One is, is a top 10 Spielberg movie. I'd probably put it at nine or 10. I would actually put it in the honorable mentions. I think this movie is maybe in the top 15 or 20 Spielberg movies. I would absolutely put this film in the top 10. There's no one in the game still doing it who can do it the way he does. Just walk that line really well and bring us into these worlds and turn us back into kids.